Hi guys, my name is Gabby and thank you so much for tuning into my channel, Gabbyology. This video will go over two vital resources that really made it so much easier for me to apply to medical school and also makes it so much easier for other high achieving low income students like myself to apply. It will also go over some lessons and tips for the MCAT that I use personally and also some pitfalls that you should avoid when studying and also after your MCAT. So yeah, we're just going to get started with the video. So number one, I applied to Kaplan Starting Line program in which I received 60% off my in-person Kaplan course and all the materials that came with it. So the online, all eight books, all the content that I needed. And I applied for that during the summer of my sophomore and junior year. I also applied to AAMC's Fee Assistance Program, aka FAP, and that gave me 15 schools free to apply to, as well as complimentary access to MSAR, the Medical School Admissions Requirement website. It also gave me reduced registration fees from $300 to $115, and it came with the official guide to the MCAT. So, if you guys receive FAFSA or, you know, qualify or think you may qualify, please, please, please apply to those programs. It will not harm you. And without those discounts, I really don't know if I would have been even able to apply to medical school. So yes, please, please, please use those. So I took my MCAT on July 9th, 2016, and I'm just going to go over some lessons and study tips that I use for myself and also that I learned through my friends, and we're just going to go over them together. So lesson number one, the key to succeeding to the MCAT is practice. Practice literally makes perfect. And that lesson is reiterated in our life over and over, and it doesn't make it any different for the MCAT. So make sure you carry it through your MCAT journey. And because I got through it, you can definitely get through it. So you just need to believe in yourself. Practice, practice, practice. Download the MCAT, um, the daily practice questions a day. Use all your resources. Google extensively everything that you want. You need to practice. You need to do sample passages. You need to take the subject test, the full length seven point hour test. You just need to do it all. That's the MCAT practice. Lesson number two, content review. Content review is not the time to spend all the time reviewing your strengths. For example, if you know you're good in Gen Chem and Orgo, you shouldn't be outlining extensively all the things from the book and relearning things you already know. Use your content review strategically and really try to focus on areas that you have your weaknesses in. Like for me, my weaknesses was in physics and what else? Physics and Gen Chem, actually, lol. Um, and yeah, I use that time to really try to hone in on those things as opposed to going over bio and psych, which I love. And, you know, those are my strengths. So I didn't use my content review time to really try to learn those things. Lesson number three. The MCAT prep course will barely, and I mean barely, go over content review. So if you are looking for that, don't. It will teach you, like, the formatting, the basics, and sometimes unrealistic goals of, like, reviewing 10 chapters in a week when you have other things to do, and especially if you're active on campus. So personally, I wouldn't recommend you to take the Kaplan prep course if you know that semester is going to be hectic for you like it was for me. I was taking 20 credits, 10 hours of research. I had a job. It was just crazy, like... Just don't do it. The course is $2,300, and because I got the 60% off, I did it. Even though I wasn't using the course like I should have been using it, I really did not study <laughs> during that course. The only studying I did was, like, I don't even know what studying I did during the course. Whatever homework they gave, probably, that's it. Like, nothing outside of it, which is so bad because the course is so expensive. I still ended up paying $900 with the 60% off, but I realistically did not have time. Did not have time. Lesson number four make a schedule and stick to it. Studying for the MCAT is an independent task catered to you and only you. No one is going to push you to study. No one's going to check up on you. No one is going to realize that you're not studying. Thus, you have to really shape your studying for you and understand that this is your race. Don't compare your progress to your friends, to others, because no one's going to be in that testing center taking that test with you or for you. It's all you all your brain, all your hard work, all your studying. So with that being said, if you decide to take the Kaplan prep course, if the Kaplan content review, the way they're doing it doesn't work for you, make it work for you. Make your own schedule because that's really what the MCAT is all about. For example, like for me, I need to stay reading one subject at a time and the Kaplan prep course usually jump through different books, like connect the, like the different ideas. And great, that works for some people, but that didn't work for me. So you really need to understand what type of person you are. Lesson number five. The MCAT is a marathon. It is not a sprint. My boyfriend told me this a hundred thousand times and I'm like, no, I need to do everything. Like, don't tell me what to do. I know what to do. And really, you can't do everything and everything at once. You really need to slow down the pace and understand that 
you need to give this task the time that it requires. The MCAT is a marathon. You're going to be exhausted. You may be burnt out, but you really, really need to give yourself that time, which is why they really recommend doing it slow and steady and not trying to rush everything in a month and a half or like two months, kind of like what I did. Um, but yeah, this is not, this is not the healthy way to do it. <laughs> so yes, please understand that the MCAT is a marathon. Take your time with it. Understand that this is the last tip point of your journey. Like you're about to enter medical school. You're applying. You're so excited. Like really bathe in that moment and really understand why you're doing this. Your passion is going to carry you through. Lesson number six. The same summer as you take the prep course, if you do not take it in the summer or winter, of course, please understand that you have to dedicate a majority of your time to studying. You really need to study for the MCAT, and that not only includes content review, but really practice, like I stressed in the beginning. Practice makes perfect. Lesson number seven, it's okay to change your MCAT date. If you are not ready for the MCAT, please do not take the MCAT. No one is going to be there with you in your testing center. No one really knows what's in your brain, what's in your mind. Only you know how prepared you are. And if you understand and you know that you are not prepared, do not take the MCAT. But also, if you know that you kind of are prepared, you're just like, oh, I don't want to take it. I'm not 100%. Take the MCAT. Like, you can't spend all the time, like, thinking you're never going to be prepared. I don't think anyone is ever 100% ready to take the MCAT, crush it, and kill it. No. It's always going to be like a scary point in your life because this is the MCAT. Like this is like your last brink before like entering medical school. All the extracurriculars, all the research and everything. But this is your last, last thing. Pull through strong on it. Lesson number eight is to take a break. Debrief, de-stress. Do whatever you can to reward yourself at the end of your MCAT studying. The MCAT is crazy. It's going to burn you out. So you really need to find something that's going to relax your mind, to relax you. Go to the gym, paint, listen to music, whatever it is. Take a break. Reward yourself for studying each and every single day to really start you up again and get you prepared for the next day. So yeah, those are all the tips and resources that I have for you guys today. And also those two vital resources, I definitely encourage you all to apply to them. And if you have any questions, please, please, please do not hesitate to contact me below. Also for those studying for the MCAT this summer, good luck. Good luck, good luck, good luck. Remember to relax and just de-stress and take it one day at a time. You will be okay. It's not all about the MCAT. Trust me, it's not, and you'll be okay. Good luck.